it's, it's good, yeah. So, sure. Um, yeah, my name is Randy Lucas, and um, I'm really honored and to get to hold this banjo one more time. I've held it many, many times and played it many times over the years. This is Snuffy Jenkins, 1934 Gibson RV4, and um, I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. I uh, started playing banjo when I was 10 years old, and um, my dad had albums of Flat and Scruggs and Reno and Smiley and Stanley Brothers, and um, he had a banjo laying around the house, so uh, I listened to all this wonderful music, and I was just really drawn to the banjo for some reason. And uh, one of the things that's really funny is uh, one day I was in there playing, learning, trying to play, trying to play Clinch Mountain Backstep, Ralph Stanley version, you know, and it's just a cool tune, and I loved it. And my dad come walking by, and he said, "You'll never learn to play that." And I think I was playing it the next day, actually. <laughs> And um, so, I, not that I needed a challenge, I had a passion, you know, to want to play music and a gift from God. I give Him all the glory and credit because I can't do anything without Lord Jesus in my life. And uh, so, I'm so thankful every day. You know, just have one more day, you know, maybe to exalt, it, brother. To exalt Him and try to lead someone to a saving knowledge of who He is. And uh, that's what life is really about. And you know, it's wonderful that we get to make these human connections. And music is the way it happens a lot of times. And we've had so many opportunities over the years to meet so many wonderful people. And uh, when I was in Bible college, my, one of my favorite professors, Dr. Raymond Scott, I, I wouldn't, I, I do pastor a church, and I've been pastoring this particular church probably about 22 years now. And um, I really wasn't seeking to pastor it. I was seeking the Lord. And he opened up doors for me to go into the ministry. And I'm thankful for that and honored and privileged. And, and whatever I can do to serve the Lord, I want to do. And uh, But again, Dr. Scott, we went to the Southern Baptist Convention the year I graduated from Bible College. And I already made up my mind about it. I, again, I wasn't seeking to pastor it. And uh, even though I had appreciation for pastors, I'm talking a lot to hear about that, but it's really important. And um, to use, and I asked Dr. Scott, I said, you know, Dr. Scott, a lot of people think I should quit playing music if God is calling me into the ministry. I was looking for some deep theological answer, and he thought a minute, he said, I don't see why you can't do both. And, uh, and he was right, you know. And we use music to reach people and to touch people and hopefully again to be a blessing. And, and it doesn't have to always be hymns and gospel music. It can be, you know, anything like a you know, soldier's toy. So you play, play some tune and you get people's attention and then you redirect their attention to the Lord Jesus. You know? And that's the way we should live our lives. And uh, the music, uh, again, is, is it, we had so many memories and great times. Uh, when I was traveling with those guys, and I grew up as a kid, and uh, Snuffy used to say, um, he said, I never did really hire Randy, so I couldn't fire him. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, they started featuring me on songs, and I would come up with a couple banjo tunes, and eventually I started playing guitar, and and then singing, and then they even got me doing some of their comedy routines a little bit, you know, along the way. And uh, I was like so shy, I was like, I don't, I don't need to be doing this, you know. And uh, but anyway, uh, it was great, and uh, so thankful for all the memories we had, and. Uh, Miss those guys a bunch, I know that, you know. Snuffy, Pappy, Greasy. This banjo is such a wonderful instrument, and it's a very rare instrument. Snuffy bought this banjo, I think, in Spartanburg in a pawn shop. It's either sixty or sixty-five dollars. And I forget what year it was. But, uh, mid, uh, probably late thirties, maybe forty or so, sort of neighborhood. But he also owned the Granada that Earl Scruggs wound up with. I think most people, a lot of 
people know the story behind that. And uh, which is pretty amazing, the stuff he had two, mo two of the most famous banjos in existence, you know, to go through his hands. <laughs> And, uh, you know, let's, let's do a little banjo number here. Let's do, I don't know, we'll do that, uh, Soldier Shark. <laughs> Red wing. This is another pre-war flathead five frame. Okay. 